Hello again, beautiful ones, and welcome back. I'm so grateful that you are here. I really wanted to share an update today. I, full disclosure, was going to film this outside because the sun was out, but it started raining in true Irish fashion. So we're back indoors. But I wanted to take you on a little bit of my journey and share more around how I came to learn about herbalism and where my journey began. Um, I'm quite new to herbalism um, comparatively. So just for context, my background is in electrical engineering and Four years ago, um, at the start of the pandemic, which sounds crazy that it was four years ago, I found e an apprenticeship on Instagram um, called the School of the Sacred Wild, and it was the first time uh, Marisha was offering this online, and I something in me just knew I had to take this 10-month apprenticeship, and so I said yes and journeyed through the first year and um, to say it was life-changing feels a little cliche but it was life-changing and i found that course to really help um, with so many different aspects of my life not just the herbal medicine part but we journeyed and lived with the seasons and resting more in the winter and really tracking our energy throughout the year. So I wanted to deepen my studies. Uh, my teacher offered a second year certification process and I hopped on that opportunity. Um, and really the focus of today's video is to talk about that certification process and my final project as part of that process was um, we could choose whatever final project we wanted to, but I wanted to create a community garden and that whole year I really dove into the books of um, gardening and working with the land, especially Mary Reynolds has a book called The Garden Awakening and this incorporates a lot of regenerative agriculture practices and working and tending to the land in this way. So this book was my blueprint for this garden. And I had an interest in learning how um, working with the earth directly really helps to heal, especially in the realms of addiction and recovery. This was an area I was interested in and found a lot of um, healing myself, just working with the earth and so I wanted to create a space that was for healing and for people to be able to access nature, maybe those, um, especially in Ireland, living in city spaces um, might not have access to, to plants and trees. So this was the journey that I went on um, and I incorporated a lot of the regenerative practices. Um, making sure to only work with like organic um, practices for deterring pests and things like that. So no pesticides were used. I grew the medicinal herbs from seed and a lot of my work with this garden was to work with intention and to also create a space that people could come to and have their own intention. So we were able to put in a spiral pathway and the spiral, what the hope is that you could start walking the spiral with something that you want to release. And then as you walk the spiral backwards um, or the opposite direction, you would call in an intention that you want to fill in the space that was created by release. And the garden we had people from the community come in and help we built willow walls living will a living willow um, fence from the abundant willow that were growing on the land there um, through a really cool practice i learned through the garden awakening um, because willow will regrow if you stick it into the earth at least a foot and um, this also was a space of just showing the regenerative process and nature of, of the earth. 
So today, the Healing Garden offers uh, medicinal herbs. These range from burdock to nasturtium to hyssop and echinacea and mugwort. So the idea is really anybody who needs the herbs can go and pick these um, freely. So working on the healing garden for my final project was a such an honor and it's such a learning experience of how to really tend to a piece of land and after graduating, I had a lot of questions about what kind of herbalist I wanted to be and where I wanted to go and kind of one of those existential moments. Um, to be honest, I found myself doing a lot of things to try and be an herbalist in all of the ways. And what ended up happening is I burn out a little bit. And so last year i really took time to kind of work on my inner garden <laughs> um but really took time to kind of integrate what i had learned for the two years that i was studying and creating and the the things that kind of came up were more clarity on what and how i wanted to be in the world as an herbalist um i think it's really easy nowadays with social media to see what everybody else is doing and to have this feeling that maybe you're not doing enough. I know I especially felt that way. Um, and so this this year and kind of this practice of, of sharing more on YouTube is to really hone in and, and clarify the things that I want to share and how I want to share and I, I believe nature shows us this as well and that's the gift of space and kind of taking time to not be as productive and to know that if you have a year of not planting any seeds or not gardening that that's okay and that actually seeds are still growing in the form of ideas and I'm definitely feeling that in my kind of fourth year through after starting my herbalism journey, this is kind of the year that I'm allowing myself to get my hands back into the soil and tending to, to plants in this way because I know that is one practice that is hugely healing for me. And yeah, the, the things that I share are um, these videos hopefully creating space to make herbal medicine and knowledge accessible and i'm also offering four week herbal courses these are called earth pace series and my hope for these courses this is my fourth one that i have coming up on hawthorne it's starting on may 1st and we're going to be working for 30 days with Hawthorne and learning all the medicinal benefits. I have recipes. I create a workbook for these. It's my favorite thing ever to do. Um, and for the last three courses, everybody gets a like 30 to 40 page workbook and it's creative. There's journal prompts, there's poetry, there's food recipes, there's ways to create with the plants and then there's herbal monographs. So we do a deep dive essentially for 30 days together in a community and um, this is virtual. It's really wonderful to connect people all over the globe in this way, to really work with one plant deeply in a slow way to allow knowledge to sink in. And I noticed, especially my learning style recently, where if I'm learning a lot of different things at once, it's hard for it to sink in. So with my Earth Pace series, I am really hoping that by working with one plant over a period of time, you can see how the plant is working in your body and how it feels to drink it as a tea versus take it as a tincture, how to forage it, what is it like to work with the fresh foraged plant material, and just really every person who joins has their own unique experience that has added to it. So I'll drop some information below on those if you're curious about the workbooks or joining us on May 1st for 30 days to work with Hawthorne. 
We have an incredible guest speaker joining us who will really dive into the mythology, the Irish mythology, um, because Hawthorne is steeped in mythology and stories here. So yeah, thank you for listening and thank you for being here. And I have so much gratitude for all of you and I'm wishing you a beautiful, beautiful day.